Recently, I built out an HVAC performance monitoring kit using Shelly automation sensors. These sensors would read refrigerant line temperatures, supply and return temperature and humidity, and even the indoor and outdoor unit wattage. Those readings come into the Shelly app, and then I can take those readings and manually enter them into MeasureQuick to find out what the true delivered performance of the system really is. It has been well documented that some inverter units struggle to maintain humidity, especially in humid climates. Despite what the manufacturers say the units can do and what they publish in their expanded performance data, Tracking and monitoring system performance is part of my consulting business. I've even been able to troubleshoot systems remotely that other air conditioning companies couldn't figure out because of these sensors. Now I'm going to be monitoring this system's performance during summer and winter, tracking its latent and sensible capacity as well as heating capacity in real time. And here is the unit that we're going to be installing it on. This is a P-Series Hyperheat Mitsubishi Inverter Heat Pump, 3.5 ton. It has a multi-positional air handler on the inside. We've got a little tent set up because it is a very rainy day, uh, but we're going to be installing some of the sensors here, the rest of them at the indoor unit. This is the outdoor module. This has the wattage sensors that will help us to determine speed that the inverter inside and outside is running. Now normally this would go in your electrical panel because that is where the indoor and the outdoor unit high voltage feeds kind of tie into a central location. With the case of this unit though, the indoor unit is powered by the outdoor unit. And so the central location where that high voltage lines split off is actually in this outdoor unit. So that's where we're gonna mount this. And here are your temperature sensors for your outdoor unit. Of course, we're gonna power it with 240 volts, but then we're also gonna have a suction and a liquid line temperature sensor. And the third temperature sensor that comes off of here is gonna be our outdoor temperature. So the modules are way back here now. They're affixed using some magnets. The power module is gonna go right here and read the power being sent to the indoor unit, as well as the power being sent to the compressor over there. And then we've got three temperature sensors. We've got a suction line, we have a liquid line that's way back there, and then we also have an outdoor sensor. Now, of course, we're gonna to have to insulate these sensors to make sure they read accurately, but here they are strapped to the pipe, ready to be insulated. This is the air handler that we're gonna attach our temperature and humidity sensors to. This is a Mitsubishi P-Series multi-positional inverter air handler. Here's the indoor module. And there's two sensors that's connected to the Shelly module inside. There's going to be a return air temperature and humidity sensor. You might drill a hole in your duct to put this sensor in there. We were able to fish it through and get it in the return. This is before the coil. And then we also have a supply temperature and humidity sensor. We were also able to fish that through the air handler and that is in front of the coil. So pretty much all we're trying to do is get a coil entering and leaving temperature and humidity which is going to help us to calculate the delivered capacity. We started to log data in October. First turning the set point all the way down to watch the unit run wide open and then watching it as it maintains set point. And the results were pretty astonishing. As this picture shows a 59 degree supply air temperature when the unit is maintaining set point. You're not going to be doing a lot of dehumidification putting out 59 degree air. But we'll have plenty of more analysis as we get the data in. For now, I hope this subject interests you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.